A strong middle class builds a community and a country. Without it, all that's left is a printing press. In the US and most of the West, we can see the fossil that is the middle class. It's disappearing and it won't return. We can see the pension funds going along with it. They will take, take, and take until there is nothing left. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at two factors. One is the disappearing middle class, and number two are the pension funds that is certainly going to be following along with that middle class. So I'm going to show you this today. I'm going to cover the middle class issue as quickly as possible. There's going to be a lot of charts here that I'm going to break down for you. But I really want to focus on the pension funds because I know this hits home with so many people and I cover it more than anybody out there. I don't know why this isn't more of an issue for some, but I guess it's not really cool to talk about and it's not really the thing that will get all the views and all the subscriptions for people, so they tend not to cover it. But here at the Money GPS, I know what's important to people and individuals who have told me about their situations, and I truly do want to see this thing change. So that's why I have information available to those who are interested, who can come here, find out the details, find out what's going to happen, and then prepare accordingly. Let's begin. This is just showing you who is the middle income and the upper income, trying to break that all down. I'm going to show you some charts here that I'm not going to really break down in detail. You can look at them if you want. I just want to make a few points about these. Basically, my whole issue that I'm here to tell you is that the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. You might have heard that before though, and it's never been more true today than ever before. Okay, I'm going to show you this beginning with this article. In 2015, 20% of the American adults were in the lowest income tier. That's up from 16% in 1971. On the opposite side, 9% are in the highest income tier, more than double the 4% share in 1971. At the same time, the share of adults in the lower middle and upper middle income tiers were nearly unchanged. So essentially, it is an absolute fact that as time goes on, there are more rich people and there are more poor people. And the in-between seems to be shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. If you look at any developing nation, you see the same thing. A very small middle class that tends to shrink as time goes on. And the average person is simply left wondering what's going to happen tomorrow. There isn't that certainty there, but it's important to understand that if you look at any strong nation, it's a middle class that built it. They physically built it, and they are those who are paying taxes, they are working, they are shopping, they are going out, and they are basically providing stimulus to the economy naturally. You don't need that to come from a central bank. You need that to come from a strong middle class. Whether that's the lower middle class or the upper middle class, it doesn't matter. Anywhere in between there, it needs to happen. But you can see that things have really changed. And I'll show you some charts here. I'm not going to cover all of these charts in detail. I'm not going to you know, bore you with all the details. A lot of them are similar. But I just wanted to show you this from this report here. Share of adults living in middle income households is falling. So looking at the middle, you will see something. 1971, it's at 61. And in 2015, it is at 50. So the share is truly changing as the years go on. And actually, if we were to look at more recent numbers than 2015, we're going to see an even bigger change. You can see how it's shrinking here. If I could draw a straight line, essentially we see that shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. And another thing I want to note here is look at the fact that the highest tier was at 4% in 1971 and it more than doubled during that time frame. So the richest of the rich people are definitely making up a bigger piece of the pie. That doesn't account for you and I, that's those you know investment bankers, that's those in the Warren Buffetts, and this, all of those really high, high-level people, not in the upper middle class. We need to understand that. 
Although it has increased over the years, you can see it's gone from 10 to 12. Those are the you know rich, what you would call rich people, but they're not part of that highest class. Those people in the highest tier, those are the you know the Warren Buffetts and, and uh, everybody else that's very very wealthy, not the guy down the street who has the big home and the you know the two cars and luxury cars and this and that. That's you know we need to separate those tiers. Okay, I want to show you this here. Growth in income for the middle class households is less than the growth for the upper income households since 1970. Again, I want to show you this here, just showing you that the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, and those who are in the lower income, let me actually go to this next one. The wealth gap between upper and middle income families is growing. Those who are in the lowest of these tiers, they find themselves with a larger and larger percentage of their disposable income to be spent not on the things that they want. They end up spending it on food, energy, housing, whether that's rent or whatever. As time goes on, you would think that there would be more opportunities being unfolded for people, that they would have more wealth, that individuals could of course learn their lessons and things but no that's not the way it's working and we tend to find people are getting into more and more debt that's not a good thing of course you see these different um, buildings around their businesses around um, payday advance uh, cash money and all these payday loans and things like this these are expanding you see the different cash for gold, cash for jewelry, sell your goods, their advertisements bombarding the radio, bombarding TV and internet and everything else. Where sell your stuff, we'll give you money, okay? You know that this is becoming a problem and it's geared not towards the Warren Buffetts. They're not watching these advertisements. It's being geared towards those who are in the, particularly in the lower tiers. And that section of people is growing as time goes on, this information is showing you $2014 and the information as new as only 2013, but it's gotten actually worse. I've shown you charts before. The middle class is losing ground, and that's not a good thing because, as I said in the introduction, a nation is going to be built with a strong middle class. They are the ones supporting the economy. Of course, you know, Everyone is doing their part, but I believe that the middle class is ultimately the foundation of the nation. And when you have it disappearing, you have a big problem on your hands. And this problem is not addressed by, definitely not by the government. The financial media won't touch it. And the alternative media somehow doesn't like to talk about it. You know why? Because it's not... It's not interesting. It doesn't get the views. And that's all really, I, I think, that people make such a focus on. It's what will get views. Why don't we actually listen to our subscribers, listen to the people who are telling us about their hardships, and try to bring that to light, try to use these platforms to bring it to the public. And we can do that if we actually do care. All right, here we go. 49% of part-time workers would prefer to work more hours at their current wage. 29% of Americans expect to earn a higher income in the coming year, not gonna happen. 43% of homeowners who have owned a home, who have owned their home for at least a year believe that its value has increased. That could be true, but the answer to one question was astonishing. The Fed asked respondents how they would pay for a $400 emergency. 47% of respondents said that they would cover the expense by borrowing or selling something. And that tells you why all of these advertisements are coming out and they're becoming more and more successful. They would not be able to come up with the $400 and it's 47% of the respondents. Okay, that's a small piece, but I believe it's probably very accurate. Half of people, if they need 400 bucks, they're going to borrow it. They're going to sell something. 49%, half of the part-time workers would like to make 
more money by working more hours. So what do they do? They get more temp work. They get more part-time work wherever they can get it. You think that's a good sign of a healthy economy? No, but we're being told it is. The jobs numbers are looking excellent. I have foolish people commenting all the time about this fact that the economy is doing well. Look at the unemployment numbers. Look at the jobs numbers. Everything is now fine. But if you're willing to ignore reality, then I certainly can't be of any assistance. We have a big issue here presented to us with the pension funds because people are going to be relying on these today or into the future. And this wouldn't be a big deal if the economy was doing well. But even if the stock market is doing well, apparently there is still an issue because there's a shortfall in all of these different pension funds, whether it's the performance of the stocks, whether it's that they've promised too much. That's that's something we can discuss later. I've talked about that before. But understand this. Governor of California, Jerry Brown, pensions will be, quote, on the chopping block in the next recession. And that's his own words. When the next recession comes around, the governor will have the option of considering pension cutbacks for the first time in a long time. That's their own words. And many people say, that will never happen. That's never going to happen. Stop spreading the fear. Okay. So you've had your head in the sand the whole time, I guess. That's okay. Let me show you. Let me help you with that. Portuguese parliament okays government's pension reform plans. This was back in 2014. Portugal's government has given the go-ahead by parliament to make cuts to the country's occupational pension systems and raise the retirement age from 65 to 66 after several weeks of uncertainty. Then I'm going to scroll down here and show you what they did. The changes include reducing the threshold for the extraordinary solidarity surcharge, CES, on the total pension income received by retired individuals from 1350 to 1000 per month. You were expecting 1350 and you're only getting 1000. That's a big chunk. That's not they're taking off $50, they're taking off $20. Hey, no big deal. We'll make some changes. That's a huge chunk. And this is just one example. I talked about more in my second book. I talked about this in previous videos. And I keep showing you examples all over the world where they have done this before. They have done it in limited accounts in the United States. They have done this in places in Europe. They have done it all over the world. You know the way that it could work. And this worries me very much. They did this in the Soviet Union all the way into uh, Russia doing this actually. Where they would have the audacity to tell people your wages your wages will be not paid out in full in cash we're going to give you some government bonds and those government bonds will be of course dated off into the future you'll be able to get your money at some point and at that point they say well okay we, we can't pay you all of it now but what we'll do is we'll just give you a small percentage of it and they give you just a small percentage and they've done this before, and they'll do it again. They will take people's retirement accounts, they will take people's wages, and they will replace them with future-dated government bonds. I have warned about this in the past. Why? Because it's happened before, and it's going to happen again. You don't need to be a genius to figure it out. Understand that it is happening today, and you are relying on all of this, it's not a good thing. What can you do to change it all? Well, number one, you have to take your funds into your own hands. That means 
taking your money from their systems and putting it into something where you have control, like real assets. Okay, I have more videos about this, talk about it in my books, of course, but if you just want to get some free information, go to my videos in the playlist called How To End Solutions. It's a good place to start, and I hope that will be of some service to you. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. Last but not least, if you found the video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can flip through these books at Amazon. There are links in the description of this video. Video. Take care.